143 viewers. Dang. 143. We're going to get so many when we post this later. So it's going to be fine. Yeah. Um, we're live now. We're like a recording now. So we'll just kind of do our, our thing. And then, um, so everyone, um, Heather had to jump off for all you guys who don't know. She's also very important at the Garden State Film Festival. So she's wearing multiple hats and doing lots of things. So she may jump in at some point, but then again, she may not. So we'll see. Um, so, I mean, I guess, uh, I don't know where we left off in our video. So I don't know, um, you know, where, uh, where to, if we should just kind of repeat and you guys talk about your approach to the characters and we kind of start there and then we can hopefully, you know, feel like we can keep going. So Jess, why don't you start us off and why don't you tell us again, like your approach to the character and just the teen and what that was like playing the, you know, the redhead devil. Yeah, right. I, I, I did get to play the redhead devil. Thank you. So appropriate. Um, yeah, I mean, playing Satine is, is Satan, which is insane and wonderful and exciting and fun. And uh, what I started doing research is that I, I started researching Satan and Lucifer and the devil, and I would put in the word she instead of he. And it just opened up this whole world of what it would be like, because these women are devils, if all the history that belongs to these devils and, and all of history that's been written in time could be she instead of he. So it gave me a lot of jumping off points. And the character Satine is very strong and she has an opinion about that women are just as, as capable as men. And she feels that women should be able to work just as strong as men can. And so most of what my research was is, is where does Satine kind of live in this world, current, the current world as it is, um, you know, as a woman, as someone who would, who would very much fight for women's rights uh, in today's times. And so, I mean, from the actor standpoint, I love playing anything devilish, anything evil, anything dark. And this was playing something dark within the light of humor and comedy, which Caitlin wrote so beautifully and so well that these are smart women I care a lot about my comrades. I care so much about Lucy and DeVille. I care so much about them. And so uh, we get to kind of have this fun play with each other about how the world is really shifting and we need to save it from uh, the bad humans. Totally, definitely. How about you, Lucy? Uh, yeah, so for me, I really, like I was saying before, just kind of focused on the idea of sort of being overwhelmed by everybody else's feelings and emotions. Um, I think Lucy, unlike the other devils, she's got this relationship with her father, God. <laughs> and so I, I kind of, too. <laughs> yeah, so I kind of tried to take a little bit of a, a oh, bless you. Thank you. <laughs> um, God bless you. Like, <laughs> yes, like a, a lighter approach with her a little bit um, and really tried to think about her youth in comparison to the other devils um because she is kind of the baby of the group she is the newest to kind of having to be a baddie and yeah. Yeah. while she has all of this power and all of this strength it's still something that's scary to her um and it i yeah i think she's just like in general afraid of her power because she doesn't want to hurt other people you know, when you were just saying that, it kind of reminded me of, I mean, this is maybe a horrible comparison for some people, but work with me, but like Twilight and like the vampires, like uh -huh. them being like, you know, old vampire, new vampire, or like, you know, interviews with a vampire, where like the old ones are kind of like over the whole, like they're like, oh yeah, I mean like sucking human's blood, like whatever, that's so, that's so centuries ago. Yeah. And that's kind of deville, like she's kind of like, oh, mm -hmm. I mean, must you just be this way and you know like I feel like Satine you're like in the middle just like as Satine is kind of like oh I'm still kind of having fun with this I'm still a little you know this is a little spicy if I want to do some some stuff and Lucy's like flailing she's trying her yeah. best and yeah. Yeah, she's like overwhelmed that she's gonna like break someone and she you know is like and, and then and, she does and she does <laughs> like, she's break them, so <laughs> but, um, but yeah so I think of that too and I think that you guys did that and I really you guys kind of fell into that I think really well when you guys were you know trying to find your differences and, and make these all three very like distinct characters which was great so you guys kind of have that sibling feel yeah which is nice and very cool so 
So that's nice. Um, okay. Um, so in terms of backstories, I think that a lot of, you know, we get some of the backstory of each of you in um, the stories, but that was kind of a fun thing that I think you guys all did was to create um, a lot of people, you know, like in the scripts, I mean, if you're uh, more of a viewer and not in like our industry, like that, that's what actors do is create this backstory. And for this, this is really not just your emotional backstory, but you know, we all know supposedly the devils and we think we have this whole idea of what they're about and you guys had to carve out your own unique kind of thing so like i know like that like me you like had a like you're talking about god and you know how you have maybe this falling out and daddy issues with god and yeah. so like how did you build up that backstory oh gosh i don't know <laughs> i don't know my imagination <laughs> It's all made up. <laughs> all just made up, guys. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I just read the script a lot and then just sort of tried to fill in the blanks for myself in a way that I thought made sense for Lucy, which is like the most vague, uninteresting answer probably. <laughs> but um, I did I did some research just like, on Lucifer and just the story of this fallen angel and that kind of thing and tried to incorporate the parts of that that I thought were relevant. I also love the show Lucifer so it was kind of fun for me to like watch episodes of that and sort of like take little things here and there but uh, yeah that's great answer great yeah. answer <laughs> yes <laughs> oh, 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 oh. It is. It's it's so much of your imagination. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy how like when you give yourself a point to run and you can just keep going. I felt like in the moments of me like having one aha moment of like Satan's this, Satan's that, and then all of a sudden it, it could just keep spiral. It just keeps going. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, I think for me, I had to lock into the idea that it's okay to be evil because once I did that, it opened up like a whole world of imagination where you could take someone down with like, <laughs> you know, the hand of God, like you could do so um, because they were allowed to. So for me, I had to really allow my imagination to go big, to have this huge world that we really could live in it, you know, and have the imagination of like, it's okay to, to be good or bad. But and our just like people, that, sometimes you, know? you just need to do it. I mean, sometimes, yeah. you know, I mean, you feel like they can't be evil, but you just need to spite people sometimes. Yeah, so, yeah. That makes sense, that makes sense. Um, what, so um, we had a lot of fun on set with some of the lines and there were some line deliveries and some, you know, nonverbal uh, things that were, uh, we couldn't keep our, ourselves together on set. A lot of them revolving around the donut that Lucy was eating. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so that was uh, one of my favorites. Do you guys have like particular like favorite lines or favorite moments on set of just having like, you felt like, wow, nailed it. That was good. I think my favorite line that Lucy says is the, um, Oh my gosh, that's when I'm eating the donut and I'm like, you even worked with Bieber, you even took on Bieber or whatever. And I think that was like the first thing I, sh it was like the first or second thing I shot. And yeah. I was like genuinely terrified because like this was my first like big New York shoot. I live in DC. I'm not even in New York. I was just, I mean, basically shitting myself the whole day because I was such an anxious <laughs> mess. So like it was partly acting, but it was partly just like me. Um, <laughs> and I did that scene and then I all of a sudden I just hear laughter and it was Caitlin and I looked over and your face is bright red and you're cracking up and I was like okay I think this is like going on <laughs> well and we kept having to like get we had we bought these donuts you know like these small donuts so for you to so keep good. eating bites it was so good and we, <laughs> we had this and it was like, we, we had not enough like we not eventually we had to conserve yeah. we said listen yeah. okay guys we have to get this take because we don't have enough donuts so she can only yeah. eat so many but it was funny i don't know who is on the side I, it was probably amanda it was amanda yeah because she's amazing and that's our production designer and she was just such a like you know there with everything but she's like okay now here's your tray okay give me that old one now here's the new one and you know here you go and it was like so that was a, a fun thing in of itself where it was kind of like oh i'm gonna have enough donuts yeah. And then we saved one overnight to go on the floor, you know, we had to really conserve, but, um, but yeah. And I love like how that shot, um, 
the take that we got with you that we actually use, you look at first, you're like, should I be laughing? Like when, when you say the be your thing, and she goes, of course, you know, and you kind of look like, oh, should I be laughing? Oh, this is very serious. No, no, yes, yes, of course, of course, yes. Mm. And I was just laughing because it was like, there was so many little like micro emotions <laughs> that happened in that like second. And meanwhile, you're like, mouth is just full of donuts. I and love that funny. one. That's one of my favorites. It's yeah. so good. It's so yeah. funny. I like that. That's one of my favorites. Um, what about you, Jess? Well, I think um, it's one of those isms that we will laugh on forever that I was allergic to the red jacket. Oh, oh that. <laughs> Who knew that red fur coat? I'd be allergic to red fur. Of course, I'd be allergic to red fur. Of, of course. And we like picked it out. We're super pumped about it. And we were all like, this is going to be great. Yeah. And I remember you had asked, do you want to get rid of it? like for continuity and I was like oh no 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 it looks too good yeah. so like, in between takes we'd have somebody like run over and take the coat from me because otherwise I would get a headache over just one eye and then I'd have like a little bit of red in one eye otherwise there was I there was no reason not to have it because it was such a great coat it was just yeah. so worth it like it was so <laughs> sustained but yeah who knew it was so funny I remember the first time you started telling me about that like you're just all of a sudden you're like hmm um I'm just like, I'm just feeling like I might maybe be allergic to this coat. <laughs> I'm like, what? What are you talking about? And you're just like, um, I'm just getting a lot of things are happening to me. Um, can we just take this off midway through? And then it was, it felt very Hollywood. It felt very like, okay, so I'm gonna get her coat, stand by, put coat on, take coat away. You know, it was very, <laughs> very sweet intern who like kept running over to take it. I felt so silly, like yeah. you're taking my coat, you know, like, but it was, but that's the thing. And that's, that's movie magic. Everyone, we had to make that happen on, on the fly. So that was, that was, oh my God. And then, okay, so other parts, um, I, I remember, so we did this in two days. We shot this in two days. It probably should have been a three-day shoot. Or four. <laughs> or four, you know. <laughs> and more time would have been great. Um, yeah. But I remember, you know, we were going through and we had missed some shots, but not critical shots, but we were getting down to the wire. And it was the last, um, the last scenes we shot were uh, the desk scenes, like the, you know, the bulk of all those scenes. And I remember that, um, Lee, you had just done your screaming scenes, you know, mm -hmm. where you're actually screaming and she kept yeah. getting, you know, um, was it Dan who brought uh, her UT? No, it was, it was one of, I think it was like Catherine and then one of the other interns who oh, kept yes. bringing me tea on a trip. Yes, and like she's like, do you need a little honey in there or something? <laughs> because you're just like, I'm like gonna lose my voice. I'm like, it's cool. We're gonna do a lot of this in post. We'll yeah. do one more good screen. But um, so you're kind of at the end there, and we were all like trying to kind of keep our cool and like keep our shit together before, because it was like, oh no, I remember kind of talking to you guys and being like, listen, guys, all right, this isn't a big deal. I want you guys to all just be very calm and everything. Um, this last scene that we have to film which is um really critical to the film um where you guys talk over De vespa's body basically and end up this film um you know we we have to get that in one take so it just needs to i mean no pressure but um just do your best just do your best and we'll just we'll go from there and so you know as a director you know i probably shouldn't have maybe said that to you um because all of you are like Oh my God, immediately I'm panicked. Immediately I'm like, oh my God, how are we gonna do this? So I remember we started it and Lee, you had not messed up. You know, you did not mess up lines. Like she's mm -hmm. flawless. Like didn't mess up lines the entire two days. Yeah. And we're talking and it was like 10, five seconds in and you said something and you were so mad at yourself. I was, <laughs> I'm serious. And I said, okay it's fine. We're going to just start this over. It's going to be fine. And I actually love that that happened because you are coming off of this moment where you just blown up Vespa's head and you can tell that you're kind of angry in that yes. take. And that's all, that's the only take. And it's a long one where you guys are saying your lines back and forth, but you can tell you're just like, how are we supposed to do this with humans like this around? And you were really like upset. I'm like, that works really well, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't wish that upon us again, but that it actually, well, like, thank God. Like, I'm glad that worked because I was really sad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wish we could have had a few more, a few more safeties on that one. Yeah. <laughs> again, if we had three days or four days, but it's amazing, like, what we can, you know, what we can accomplish, like, when we're down to the wire, like, you know, 
you start off the film and you're like, okay, I want to get this perfect. And you want to, you know, and you start off and you really, you know, want to make sure you have all this time. And then you're trying to wrap up before the end of the first day. So you're like, okay, we're going to really, we got to get these locations in. Otherwise those are going to be gone tomorrow. Um, but then really when you're like, oh no, we're going to wrap this thing. It's like all of a sudden a different part of your brains kind of, and the fact for you three to do that scene really one time, I mean, fully all the way through and to have your lines and to have everything kind of work to me, I was like, when I told you guys that this needs to, ha I was like, there's no way this is going to happen. There's no way this is going to happen. <laughs> Something's going to go wrong. There's going to be a boom in the back of the, you know, the frame. There's going to be something going wrong, but you guys nailed it. And that's just, I like, I think that was like one of the coolest parts for me, you know, first time director, just seeing you guys like get into your zone and really nail it, which is so cool. Yeah. Movie magic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Ooh, other movie magic. Yes. How high you had to prop up the chair for Hope to sit oh, on so that she tiny. didn't look so tiny. You're right. I totally forgot about that. You see those behind the scenes pictures. <laughs> so Hope, who plays Vespa, we have this giant chair, which I'll get, there's a funny story with that, but this giant red chair. And we had to prop not only the chair up on Apple boxes to make sure that she like cleared the table because she's such a petite, you know, little thing that she was like sinking in the chair and the chair was too long to, like it to look very imposing that she was kind of lording over her desk. But then we also had had her sit on pillows or on mm -hmm. something else. Like she was really like on top of a bunch of stuff and you know, yeah. yeah. And that's just so funny because you just don't know that, you know, you think, Oh, she's just sitting in her chair and yeah. it's just, Nope, Nope, not quite. But um, that chair, which I, I still have, it's now at my house, is the bane of, uh, you know, my existence. Um, it's a huge chair. And so I remember I had, we were looking for this perfect red chair because I really wanted it to be the statement chair that Vespa's sitting in, in this all white, and you know, we have this red chair. And we were down to the wire. I remember, you know, Jess, you and I were kind of like, oh my God, are we going to find... We're going to have to just get some like computer chair that looks super stupid and just like not have it be this thing. And we were looking and looking. I like found a perfect chair and said, hey, can we rent this? And they're like, sure, for $2,000. And I was like, I, I, what? Movie? Friends? No, wait, we're not going to do that. So um, anyway, we found this one on um, like eBay or something, you know, and we could go pick it up. So I am running around like a chicken with my head cut off the entire week before the film. And my husband is trying desperately to find ways to help me. And he has no idea. And meanwhile, our entire living room is full of like production design that has been shipped to our house. It's just like statues and all the stuff that you see in the film is like in our living room, taking up all this space. And I'm like, it's fine. It's going to be great. Um, and, uh, so he ended up, he's like, I'm going to go get this chair for you because I was like, oh, maybe we can get some people to go get this chair. He's like, no, no, I'm going to this chair for you. Well, good thing he did. Cause it ends up being this massive chair that I was like, so maybe they can take it on the subway or something <laughs> that would never, ever, ever have occurred. But, um, so my husband's allergic to cats. So he gets there and this was a, apparently um, the woman who ha had two cats and that was their favorite chair. So he's driving this home and he, by the time I get to like, he gets home, he's got golf ball eyes. He's like, you know, just like absolutely scratchy throat. He's just like, yeah, I think the woman had cats. Um, maybe, we, maybe clean this or check if your actors have, you know, allergies or something. And it was funny because I had to ask Hope that before we started filming. I'm like, please tell me you're not allergic to cats. <laughs> you might start. And then we had an allergic reaction to a coat, so it didn't even matter. It's fun. It all worked yeah. out. <laughs> but that was fun. That last last uh, couple of days was yeah wild. Indeed, put indeed. Together. More stories for our next uh, Zoom meeting. Yes, yes. But um, so well, Jess. Okay, so you Jess was not just a uh, lead actor in the film, but also a producer. So. Okay. What, um, what would you say is your takeaway from, you know, as a producer, what do you think is your takeaway from this? Good, bad? Yeah, um, I'll, I'll keep it short because it's, it's, I realized you can make things lengthy, but like really with producing, you realize as an actor, you have very little to do. You need to come in, 
know your lines and leave and you and you should really do that because it's producing there's so many other parts to it that you don't even know exist so i i opened myself up as an actor to realize that i am very lucky to be an actor but to be a producer takes a whole nother skill set and there's a lot more to it so i'm happy to be now a content creator and uh yeah you know i'm happy to be able to do both of it but producing is a much bigger ball much bigger yeah yeah it is but I think at the same time, I think that we figured out, um, despite all the work and the extra stuff that we could do it. And, and we knew we could, but we, I think, similar to getting that last take before the end of the day, when push comes to shove and you realize no one's going to do this but you, you know, you kind of, like we, I think we said at the end, we're like, that was insane, but we are really proud of ourselves that we did more than we thought we were capable of, which was great. So that's always fun. But, um, I have a question from my okay. mom. Oh, excellent. <laughs> uh, she asked, is there going to be another episode? That's a really, really great question. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's our goal. Um, I guess we should, that's a, that's a really great question. We should definitely talk about that. Like, so the future of Wicked Image. So, um, we had made this originally, um, as a short film kind of to see, where it was going to go and, um, and all that. But, um, we wanted to open it up to web series of some sort or some sort of series. So, um, we are hoping that, uh, this does well and that people respond to it and like the devils and, um, we would love to turn this into a web series. Um, we're actually working right now behind the scenes on a new cut that would make it more like a pilot, um, instead of a, uh, just a complete short film so that we can lead into it. Um, and yeah, I think that generally the series, if, in, if we had our ideal situation would be every episode, you devils take on a bad human of some sort. So um, it would be, you know, corporate people and environmental people and- There's so many to choose from. So many, so many, so guys, write in, tell us what you, who you want to, you know, us to cover and we'll do it. We could have our audience write in and, and say who they want us to kind of conquer. And if anyone has any uh, ideas of production companies who want to take us on, we are, we have stuff written. We're ready to go. I mean, we can do it. Yes. Yes. So tell your mom and to anybody else who's watching that, yes, we definitely want a future for Wicked Image. Um, you ladies definitely uh, have much more story to tell. Uh, so I think that we definitely need to keep that up. So yeah. Awesome. Um, does anybody have any more questions they want to talk about? Otherwise, we're kind of getting to maybe the end of how long good. people are paying attention to. Oh, I think, yeah. <laughs> I think we're good. <laughs> well, does anybody have any more comments? I, I'm not seeing any more comments on the on the Facebook thing. I'm just making sure that I don't miss I comments. The one that had mentioned that our wardrobe and makeup was outstanding. So did you want to just mention? Oh, um, great. Yeah. Like, um, uh, Lauren Konkarshi. Okay, perfect. Um, yeah, so shout out um, in terms of makeup, um, hair and makeup um, was uh, Marlene Rosenberg, who I always never know how to pronounce it, but it's Mars Artistry. Yeah. It's all one, I think one word. Um, you can find her on Instagram. It literally is how it's spelled. M-A-R-S-A-R Artistry. So uh, <laughs> she was fantastic. Um, and then in terms of costumes, um, it was kind of a joint effort between um, Kevin Stinson um, who's a great stylist, um, and then a lot of the costumes, including I think your dra um, dress, Lucy. Lee, I always I like I can, I'm only, I'm just gonna call you Lucy for the rest of your life. Um, but uh, was um, Miriam Conde, who's um, her uh, company is up in Harlem. In yeah, Harlem. She, um, she does all of her own couture stuff. She's great. Yeah, yeah. she's fantastic. Um, and her company is pro um, called Femme Progressive. Yes. So. Um, yeah, F-E-M-M-E -M -M -E underscore progressive. So both wonderful, wonderful people um, who you should definitely use for your next film because they were great. Okay. So. Okay, ladies. Um, well, yeah, then I think we should um, wrap up here, but maybe we'll do this again sometime because I feel like I, we have so many stories that we just didn't even remember that we had. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Great. So, okay. Well, bye, audience. Thank you for tuning in after the fact. Uh, yeah. This has been fun. Okay. <laughs> bye. Bye, guys.